Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, nearly ready for lunch, um, the last uh, talk of the uh, session. Um, so I've been asked to speak about post-cardiotomy, cardiogenic shock, and indications for ECMO. I have no potential conflict of interest to report. So weaning from bypass, um, we've heard this morning um, from the other speakers about the importance of safety and communication and teamwork in theatre. Um, but for most of us, we do this day in, day out, and it's probably a very automatic response. And in the vast majority of cases, is normally a very smooth transition from the pump assisted circulation to spontaneous heart activity. But in less than 1% of cases, we may run into difficulty. I'm glad that I put a checklist in, and I'm sure we all have in our heads um, mnemonics that we teach our trainees about uh, the different um, ways that we need to uh, come off bypass. So temperature, obviously very important, and uh, once the cross clamp is off and we're warming, we would uh, make sure that we have our warming devices in. Um, looking at the post cross clamp gases, we're looking at pot potassium, uh, base excess, pH, glucose control. Um, Communication with the perfusion, as we've heard this morning, is uh, imperative. Uh, lung ventilation. You know, in our, in our centre, we are facing the perfusionist eye to eye. In your picture, it looked like maybe not everyone's facing each other, but certainly uh, in Manchester, the, uh, the anaesthetist and perfusionist are uh, facing eye to eye, and we would say that the lungs are on, ventilation on. And also, with the chest open, we would check that the lungs are ventilating. If the pleura is open, we can communicate with the surgeon that the lungs are going up, particularly in a high BMI patient, if there's been a very long bypass time and the surgeon hasn't allowed you to leave PEEP on, you may need to do quite a number of recruitment manoeuvres to prevent hypoxia before coming off bypass. And obviously we would look at our TE examination. Uh, pacing as well, there should be clear communication with the surgeon that the pacing wires are working and checking the threshold. And there may be um, a rate that you've decided to come off bypass at. Most, most surgeons would like 70 to 80. It may be that if you've got some right heart dysfunction, you may want to pace the heart uh, faster. And of course, during the case, as the anaesthetist, you should be communicating with the perfusionist about the amount of vasoconstrictors that have been used on bypass. So certainly if the perfusionist has gone through two or three syringes of metaraminol during the case, trying to come off without any noradrenaline connected is probably a bit stupid. Um, so we've gone through all our checks. And as we said, in the vast majority of cases, it's a very aut automatic thing, like landing the plane. Um, we're happy with our heart rate. We're happy with our mean arterial pressure. And often it's just... A matter of filling and most patients will you know, come off bypass very easily but in that small number of patients we may be unable to come off bypass so what things are going, going through our head so ventricular function we will have obviously have our echo to guide us um, but we'll be looking at the left ventricle and the right ventricle and it may be that we've already decided before we've even gone into theatre that this patient has got lots of risk factors for having ventricular dysfunction afterwards and we may have connected some inotropes, vasopressors. In our unit, we use lots of dopamine, milrinone, noradrenaline, vasopressin. Um, I'm sure it's similar around the world. Um, inhaled nitric oxide is also used, particularly in the transplant patients, and we'll come on to that soon. Um, and here's some sort of indexes, numbers that we all like objective uh, things to look at. So mean arterial pressure less than 70, cardiac index less than 2, uh, mixed venous sats less than 70, and elevated lactate, despite... Uh, balloon pump and maximum pharmacological support, we may then consider mechanical circulatory supports. So what do we mean by difficult or easy coming off bypass? So I managed to find this paper in the literature, uh, which is titled Difficult and Complex Separation from Cardiopulmonary Bypass in High-Risk Cases. So they looked at 2,300 patients and they classified easy, so 50% of patients, as we all see in our practice, require very little support coming off or maybe one vasoactive agent or one inotrope. Difficult, two drugs, and complex failure on the first wean to attempt or mechanical devices. Uh, 108 patients died, and of those, 78%, as to be expected, were difficult to wean from bypass. So clearly, it's a very important time weaning from bypass, and separation from bypass is an in independent predictor of mortality and adverse outcomes after cardiac surgery. This is a very busy slide which you may not be able to read, but there's obviously lots of risk factors that we can identify in the preoperative period which may um, influence LV dysfunction post-bypass. Obviously age, uh, 